Hey folks, Chris Brenton again. And in this video, I'm going to go through and show you how to use Zeek to live monitor traffic on your network and then automatically have it pass that off to Rita so Rita can go through and do its data processing to see if there's any C2 on your network. Now, when we've done this with versions of Rita prior to version 5, we've done it as a cron job. So we've just gone in and told, uh, had cron run Rita. And we're going to do something kind of similar to that now. But we got a little bit of a hiccup. And the hiccup is what you're looking at on the screen right now. We use Charm Bracelet Bubble T to go through and create an ASCII graphical interface. Looks good. That's great. Except Charm Bracelet's going to expect to run inside of a terminal. So if we just run it disconnected, it's going to go through and fail. So we need to fool it into thinking it actually has a terminal to run inside of. And the tool we're going to use for doing that is Scream. Now, I can't run Scream directly from Cron. So I'm first going to have to create a script that runs Scream and then call that script from Cron. If it sounds confusing, don't worry about it. I'm going to talk you through the entire process. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to quit out of this. So the first thing I want to take a look at is, is Zeke running on the system? So I'm going to say Zeke status. And notice it comes back and it says, hey, there's no containers. So I know Zeek is not running. So the first thing I want to do now is, or the next thing I want to do is I want to say Zeek start. And that'll actually restart Zeek over reboots as well. And now if I go in and say Zeek status, hey, there's my Zeek container running. No problem. Awesome. So we're off to a good start. So now we need to go through and create that script. Where do we put it? You can put it any way you want to, so long as it's findable, but I'm just going to put it in under opt reader because this is where all the other reader files are. Might as well put this script here as well. And we need to come up with a name for the file. So I'm going to say, um, let's see, sudo, so it'll be owned by root. And then I'm going to say nano, and we'll call it reader roll. Right? Instead of rip roll, reader roll. <laughs> so that'll go through it. You know, it's descriptive, it's reader, rolling database, you know, you get it. All right, and now I'm going to hit enter, and that opens up my file. So what needs to be in the script? Well, first I need to go in and define the shell. So I'm going to say pound exclamation point, bin, bash. There we go. And now I'm going to use my screen command. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to say screen. Now I don't have to run it as sudo. Um, my cron job will take care of running it with root level permissions. So I'm just going to run screen. And when screen's running as a detached terminal, it's actually possible to connect to that if you want to. And you may need to do that for troubleshooting purposes. So I always like to give it a descriptive name so I know what's running in each of my screen sessions in case I have more than one running. The way to give it a descriptive name is dash capital S. So I'm going to call this Rita import. I will know what that means. And now I need to tell uh, screen I want to run this in the background, dash, da uh, dash D dash M. And now I need to tell it what command do I want to run. Well, the command I want to run is Rita. I always like to use absolute paths just to make sure I know exactly what I'm running. So the absolute path for that is user local bin Rita. So far, so good. So, okay, what do we want Rita to do? Well, we want Rita to import some data. So we'll give it the import switch. And we're going to import data a little differently than we do with PCAPs, right? With PCAPs, we read in the PCAP, we get all the data we need, we open, we close the database, and we're done. But this is going to be a little different, because every hour we're going to want to append additional information to the end of that. So we need to tell uh, Rita this is going to be one of those special databases that we're going to keep appending to the end. So I need to also give it the command line switch, dash, dash, rolling. So far, so good. Now, I also need to tell it, where are the Zeek logs? Well, the Zeek logs are dash L. The Zeek logs are going to be located at opt Zeek logs. Pretty straightforward. And now I need to go through and just define what do I want to name this database? Well, I'm going to keep this simple, and I'm just going to name it rolling. Now, very important, make sure you hit the enter at the end of the line. Cron sometimes barfs if it doesn't find line feed characters at the end of commands. It, it, it doesn't, it's not happy with that stuff at all. So just make sure you hit the enter key so your cursor's on the third line, just like you see mine. And then once you do that, the script is done. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to say control O, I want to write out this file. And then I'm going to say control X, I want to exit out of that file. 
So now if I type in my LL command, I can see I've got read a roll, new file that's been created. We still have a minor problem though, right? This is a script, but the script is not executable. So I need to go in and add the execution bit to this. So I'm going to say sudo chmod, and then I'm going to say plus x. I want to add the execution bit, and I want to do that to read a roll. So now when I look at my ll command, hey, that's got the executable set on, bit set on it now. Awesome. We're off to a good start. <clears throat> Next, we need to go through and we need to set up our cron job. Now, this, is gonna, this might vary a little bit with different versions of Linux. So you may want to read up on how your particular flavor of Linux likes to do cron jobs. I'm on an Ubuntu 24.04 uh, LTS system. So with that, there's a cron.d directory and files that you put in there will get executed as a cron job. So, you know, you may need to use, you know, cron tab as root user with a dash E to create it. Again, you need to kind of, you know, check what's appropriate for your particular platform. Well, we're going to go to Etsy because we're on Ubuntu and we're going to say cron.d. We're going to go to that directory and you can see I've already got a couple of scripts in here already. Ooh, I've already got a reader script. Let's get rid of that because we're just going to create that ourselves. Oh, there we go. So now we've gotten rid of that. <laughs> so we've got a couple of them in the background. Don't worry about those. Those are fine. But we're going to go through and we're going to create a cron job for our running reader. So I'm going to say sudo, because it's going to be owned by root, nano, and I'll need to spell it correctly, sudo nano, uh, nano and I'm just going to call it reader. All right. So we're going to create... Um, our cron tab. The first thing we need to define is when we want this to go off. And there's five numeric numbers or special characters that'll start the line. Each one represents uh, an indicator of when we want this to trigger. And in the in an order, they're minute, hour, day, month, weekday. And that'll allow us to pretty much define any time interval that we want to. So Zeek is going to go through and process data at the top of the hour and the top of each hour. So I'm going to want to give it 15, 20 minutes to do to have Zeek write out its logs, and then I'll have Rita kick off after that. So my first number is going to be 20. So that's telling it go off at 20 minutes after the top of the hour. Now I need to tell it which hours do I want to do that for. Well, I'm going to say star. I want to do it for all hours. Okay, which days do I want to do it for? Well, I want to do it for all days. What about months? I want it for all months. What about weekdays? I want it for all weekdays. So I end up with 20 space star, space star, space star, space star. So what that'll do is that'll go off at 20 minutes after the top of the hour, every hour, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all year long. Perfect. That's exactly what we need. Now we need to tell it what level of permissions we want to run this with. Well, we want to run it as root. Then we need to tell it, okay, what do you want to run? Well, I want to run opt, Rita, Rita roll, that script we created. And that's pretty much it. That's the only thing we need in here. Now, again, like before, we want to make sure we hit enter because Kron gets upset when it can't find line feeds. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to hit enter, and that's all I need in this script. So now I'm going to hit control O. I'm going to write that out. And now I'm going to hit Control X to exit out. Type LL again. Okay, there's my reader file right there. I don't need to make it executable. Notice the permissions matches everything else that's in there. So I'm going to be in pretty good shape. So we've got Zeek running in the background, and we've got we've told Rita we want to go through and run 20 minutes after the top of the hour. And now this is where it gets a little challenging because we need to wait. We need to wait until. Uh, Reed has had a chance to go in and process in some data. So I'm actually going to pause for a couple of hours, and then I'll come back and I'll finish up the rest of this video. Okay, so I've given our setup a couple of hours to go through and collect data. And now we're going to go through and check to see is everything working the way we expected. So the first thing we should be seeing is Zeke going in and creating log entries. So I'm going to go to um, opt Zeke logs. And 
I should see a directory with the current date on it. And that is today's current date. So that tells me it created a directory and it's going to start putting logs into that directory. I'll get a directory name that's associated with the day those logs were collected as it goes forward from here. If I CD into there, just to kind of see what's there, here are all my log files in compressed format. And it's going through and it's uh, breaking them out into one hour uh, cycles. So here was from 1407 to 1500 because it started just a little bit after the top of the hour. And then 15 to 16, 16 to 17. And now the next time it cycles, I'll get 17 to 18. So far, so good. So that's collecting information. So the next thing we want to take a look at is Rita doing what it's supposed to. Well, if I do a Rita space list, type in my password. That'll list out all the databases on that system. So remember the database we created was named Rolling, and we said it's going to be one of those special databases that allows me to keep appending information at the end. So this says Rolling True, so it is set up correctly. Here's the current date time range that's inside of that database. This seemed to work the way I expected it to. So now I should be able to do a Rita View Rolling. And I might not have a whole lot in here interesting yet because it's only correct for a couple hours. But as you can see, I have one that's already identified it as being critical. I've got a couple of lows. I've got some nuns in here. Um, I can use my arrow keys to work down the page. And if I get to the end, it'll automatically page wrap to the next page. I can also, so that was hitting the up and down arrows. If I hit the right arrow, it'll do a full page. And if you look at the little dots down here, this tells me how many pages I have. And you should be able to notice that dot gets a little bit lighter for that page that it goes to. But I have one thing that's interesting so far. So my system is going out to this 34 address. Uh, let's see, only one of the three systems on the network is talking to it. It was first seen three hours ago. Well, that's about how long ago I set up Zeke to start monitoring the network. And, oh, hey, look, this says it's an Amiga using iBrowser that's gone out to connect 69 times. Hmm, I don't remember seeing an Amiga in my house. So I may want to start taking a look around and see what's actually causing that. So you get the idea. So now this will go through. Anytime I go in and I run Rita, I'm going to see the previous 24 hours worth of data. If I, let's say, collect data on Tuesday and go to view on Thursday, right? If I start collecting on Tuesday, go to view on Thursday, I'm only going to see the previous 24 hours. You know, because I waited 48 uh, hours to go in and look, I'm not going to see anything in between. But usually not a big deal because anything that's acting in command and control is going to keep running until either you kill it or the attacker kills it. So I'll always get the latest and greatest 24 hours when I come in here. Uh, that's, that's Reader in a Nutshell. Catch you in another video.